Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Today, we're talking about menstruation and the ovarian cycle. So do you know when the follicle-stimulating hormone is secreted? Do you know when the luteinizing hormone is secreted? Do you know when progesterone is at its highest level? If you don't know that, you might want to watch this video. Stay tuned. Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. Today, I am continuing to work from the Blue Book. The Blue Book is right back there. You can see it. If you're interested in purchasing the Blue Book, you can purchase it on Amazon. Just search for the Blue Book. That's the name of it. And it's published by Mark Clinic. And you can also get it as an app, the Blue Book app. You could probably just Google Blue Book app, or you could go to clinicreviews.com and look for the Blue Book app there. Um, it's a collection of facts that you need to know, just facts. It doesn't have any NCLEX style questions. I write these questions to go along with the book so that you can see how you can take the information in the blue book and use it in questions. So people will say to me, what do I need to know for the NCLEX? Well, part of what you need to know is in the blue book. Okay. So, um, you know, we're part of the greater clinic review organization. We do NCLEX reviews on demand. You can get those through clinicreviews.com. You can also do our on demand tutoring. It comes in, um, I'm sorry, monthly tutoring, small group tutoring comes in a monthly bundle. And then we also have, um, we have our streaming service. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with the questions. What is the average amount of blood loss during a menstrual period? 10 to, uh, 10 to 20, 30 to 40, 50 to 70, or 100 to 150. So the answer, you just know it or you don't. It's actually the blue book says 50 to 60. I would say it would be right anywhere between 50 to 70 or 50 to 80. Uh, I wouldn't go much over 80. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go much below 50. Uh, that's a pretty good average amount. Which phase of the ovarian cycle begins with the maturation of follicles? and ends with ovulation. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be asking the same questions over and over again, but they're gonna be worded differently so that you know how to answer these questions. I don't know about you, I'm not an expert on this. So for me to remember what is secreted when and all the different phases can get confusing to me. So I have to practice it, I have to talk about it, talk through it, so that's what we're gonna do. So the typical menstrual cycle is 28 days, not the menstrual cycle, but the ovarian cycle is 28 days. Whether your cycle is 30, whether your cycle is 32, whether your cycle is 27, on the NCLEX, you're going to say it's 28 days, okay? So the first 14, they're divided into two 14-day segments. The first 14 days is called the follicular phase. It starts with menstruation, so that's the shedding of the uterine lining, it starts with menstruation, and it ends with ovulation. Then the second 14 days is called the luteal phase that begins with ovulation and it ends at the beginning of menstruation. So the first day of the menstrual period is the first day of the cycle, okay? So which phase of the ovarian cycle begins with the maturation of follicles and ends with ovulation? That's the follicular phase. We have two phases, the follicular and the luteal phase. All right, how many days after ovulation does menstruation typically occur? So ovulation occurs on day 14. Day one is menstruation, the first day of menstruation. Day 14 is ovulation. Then there's 14 more days before menstruation occurs. So how many days after ovulation does menstruation typically occur? It's 14 days. Which hormone is primarily responsible for the stimulation of ovulation? Now, this, this is where things can get a little bit confusing. So we have the follicular phase. During the follicular phase, we have estrogen levels rising. Estrogen levels, as they go up, stimulate the uh, thickening of the endometrial layer. The endometrial layer is essentially the, the lining of the uterus, and it gets thicker and thicker because it needs to be thick enough for implantation of the fertilized egg. So estrogen levels go up during the follicular phase, and that endometrial layer gets thicker. The other hormone that goes up is the follicle stimulating hormone. So what happens is we have a follicle and the follicle matures and it eventually matures to where it's ready to release an egg. And when it releases that egg, that's called ovulation. So we have follicular development and ovulation, that's day 14. We have 
uh, after menstruation is done, we have increasing thickening of the endometrial lining and that's estrogen that stimulates that. So what hormone is primarily responsible for the stimulation of ovulation? <laughs> All right. It's none of the ones I just told you y'all. So I just told you the follicle stimulating hormone uh, matures the follicle. Estrogen increases the thickness of the endometrial lining, but then there's another hormone that stimulates the release of the egg itself. And that's the luteinizing hormone. And that's pretty much the only role of the luteinizing hormone. So luteinizing hormone has like one job and it stimulates the release of the egg from the follicle. The follicle stimulating hormone matures the follicle. So it's ready to secrete the egg. Estrogen uh, thickens the endometrial lining. So it's almost ready to take an implanted egg, but it's the luteinizing hormone that stimulates the release of the egg from the follicle, which is ovulation. What is the main hormone during the follicular phase or what are, are the main hormones during the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle? So I just told you that y'all, do you remember what I told you? And it's not luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone peaks right with ovulation be, because that's its only job, but they're not, it's not really out there any other time. So what are the two? I told you you have one that stimulates the maturity of the follicle and you have one that stimulates the thickening of the endometrial lining and that's estrogen and FSH. What is the main role of progesterone during the luteal phase? Okay, so we have the follicular phase that ends with ovulation. Once the egg is released, the releasing, the releasing of the egg stimulates the creation of what's called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is a cell layer along the top of the endometrium. So estrogen has promoted the growth of the endometrium. So we've got the endometrial lining that's nice and thick and it's ready for an egg. But then we need something else on top of it. And what it goes along the top of it is the corpus luteum. That is occurs as a result of the release of the egg. Once the corpus luteum is in place, it starts to secrete another hormone. And the hormone it secretes maintains the corpus luteum. So the, the corpus luteum secretes a hormone to maintain itself. All right, what is the main role of progesterone during the luteal phase? It prepares the endometrium for... Uh, possible implantation. So in other words, it, it, it maintains the corpus luteum. Okay. So the endometrial lining is covered by the corpus luteum and progesterone maintains it. Okay. So the, that's the main role of progesterone, which hormone is primarily involved in the thickening of the endometrium during the proliferative phase of the menstrual cycle. So I told you, and this is why we're using different words so you know how to answer these questions. We have the follicular phase and the luteal phase. The follicular phase starts with menstruation, ends with ovulation. The luteal phase starts with ovulation, ends with menstruation. So what is the proliferative phase? The proliferative phase is another word used for the follicular phase. The follicular phase is the entire phase. The beginning of the follicular phase, you have menstruation. That's where you shed the endometrial lining. Once that is shed, then you begin to proliferate the endometrial lining again. So you shed it and then it starts to grow again. So this is now the second half of the follicular phase could also be called the proliferative phase. So what hormone is involved in the thickening of that during the proliferative phase? And I told you what that was because I told you the FSH uh, matures the follicle, but I said something else thickens the endometrium and I said it's estrogen. So it's estrogen that's responsible for thickening the endometrium during the proliferative phase during the second half of the follicular phase. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So this shows you what's going on here. So along the top, you can see the follicle. So at the very top, it says ovarian cycle, it says follicular phase. And if you can correspond it with the days below, uh, the follicular phase, days zero to 14, the luteal phase is 14 to 28. All right. So we have, if you look at this, it says menstrual phase. Well, I'm sorry, let's look at the fo follicle first. So we have those circles, right? So we have an immature follicle, matures, 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 and by day 14, it releases the egg. Okay. That's the follicular stimulating hormone is causing that to happen. Then we have menstruation. Menstruation they're showing is day zero to four. I think it'd be more likely to be day zero to five or day zero to six. In any event, we have the, um, the shedding of the endometrial lining, and then we have it begin to proliferate again. So it starts to thicken again. So you can see in the picture between day four and 14, you have the thickening of that endometrial lining. 
and then you have the um, ovulation occurs and you can see that it thickens just a little bit more. It, it develops that corpus luteum along the top and it's ready for implantation of the egg. So we have estrogen. You can see estrogen is secreted and I drew these lines on here so they're not perfect, but estrogen is secreted right along with the development of that endometrial lining or the thickening of the endometrial lining. FSH, you can see, is secreted. It goes up to stimulate maturity of the follicle. It goes down a little bit again. I don't know if it goes down that much, but it goes down a little bit again. And then it peaks at the time of ovulation. Then we have the luteinizing hormone. The luteinizing hormone essentially has one job, and it's to stimulate ovulation. So you can see it peaks right at ovulation, and then it goes right back down again. So that's the job of the luteinizing hormone. And then we have progesterone. I think progesterone actually starts to go up a little earlier than I indicated that it did. So I think we could shift it over a little bit to the left, but progesterone is secreted by the corpus luteum and it maintains that corpus luteum so that it's ready for implantation. The daily iron loss during normal metabolic processes in adults is on average one and a half milligrams. Okay, so what this is saying is all adults, men and women, use about one and a half milligrams of iron in daily metabolic processes, like to make more hemoglobin. Okay. So that's the typical. So we need to ingest at least, uh, one and a half milligrams of iron, usable iron, um, to make up for what we're using every day. All right. How much does this increase per day during menstruation? So because women are losing blood during menstruation, the demand, the iron demand is higher in order to make up for the loss of blood. We need more iron to make more, more red blood cells and more hemoglobin. So how much more, how much more of a demand? Well, it's, you just have to know it. It's a half to one milligram a day. So in other words, women should consider taking iron supplements. If you're not going to ingest more iron, either during menstruation or even all month would be fine because our iron demand, our uh, need to make more red blood cells is higher than in men. Which of the following best describes what occurs during the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle? So we're reviewing the same content. We're just asking it in different ways so you can see how to answer different questions. All right, the follicular phase starts with menstruation, ends with ovulation. The endometrium is shed. Well, that's true. The endometrium is shed during the first four, five, six days of the follicular phase. The corpus luteum forms. Actually, that occurs after ovulation. M follicles mature and estrogen levels rise. Well, that's true. Progesterone dominates. That's actually during the luteal phase. So we're going to cross off B and D. So which is a better description of what happens during the follicular phase? The endometrium is, is shed, which is only the first few days of the follicular phase, or follicles mature and estrogen levels rise, which occurs pretty much during the entire follicular phase. Well, a better answer, a more broad answer, more of an umbrella answer is actually C. So that's the best answer here. So if you have to choose between something that only covers the first few days of the follicular phase or something that covers the majority of the follicular phase, it would be better to pick something that covers the majority of the follicular phase. Which hormone peaks just before ovulation? I told you that. I said it has one job, not much going on with it otherwise. It has one job. Which one is it? It's a luteinizing hormone, okay? That's what stimulates ovulation. At what point in the cycle is the corpus luteum formed? So we know the endometrial lining is, is being, is growing as a result of estrogen and it's, it's nice and thick by the time ovulation occurs, ovulation occurs, which stimulates the development of the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone to maintain it and make sure that it's ready for implantation. So at what point is the corpus luteum formed after ovulation? Yes. During menstruation? No. During the follicular phase? No. During the proliferative phase? No. Remember the proliferative phase is another word for the growth of the endometrium. Okay. So proliferative is when the endometrium is thickening. That occurs during the follicular phase. So after ovulation is the correct answer. The nurse educates a client on the menstrual cycle, which hormone stimulates the growth of the graphene follicle. All right. This, I don't know that I would use this word to teach a patient, but I wanted to teach you the vocabulary word. The graphene follicle is the official name for the follicle, <laughs> okay? So remember I said there's a follicle that's maturing so that it's ready to release the egg. The name of that follicle is the graphene follicle. So which hormone matures that follicle? 
Well, we talked a lot about this. You should know it's during the starts. Remember the follicle phase starts with menstruation, ends with ovulation. It's during this time that the follicle is maturing and it's maturing in response to FSH. A client asks about the primary event during the luteal phase, what the nurse should respond. Okay, the primary event. Well, let's see what we got here because I don't really have anything in my head. Follicles mature. No, that occurs in the follicular phase. Progesterone levels rise to support potential implantation. That's true. That happens. Ovulation occurs. Actually, ovulation occurs on the last day of the follicular phase, so I wouldn't say it occurs during the luteal phase. The endometrial lining is shed. That occurs early in the follicular phase, so the only one that makes any sense here is progesterone levels rise to support potential implantation. Which phase of the ovarian cycle coincides with the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle? So again, I'm testing vocabulary here for you. So the proliferative phase occurs during the follicular phase. Proliferation means growth or in growth in number. So proliferation, proliferative phase is when that endometrial lining is thickening. Then you have ovulation. It stimulates the, the growth of the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Okay, so another word that uh, can be synonymous with the luteal phase is the secretory phase. Okay, so the secretory phase occurs during the luteal phase because the corpus luteum is secreting progesterone. The nurse is reviewing a client's lab results and notices a peak in luteinizing hormone. This finding is most consistent with menstruation, ovulation, follicular development, or corpus luteum formation. I hope you know the answer to this. This is like the third time I've asked you. Luteinizing hormone has one job, and that's to stimulate ovulation. If the ovum is fertilized during the luteal phase, what hormone will be secreted? So just a couple, this isn't in the, this actually specifically isn't in the uh, ovulation portion of the blue book, but I thought I'd cover it here just so you know. So what is a totally different hormone? Not normally secreted unless the egg is fertilized. So what is it that's released when the egg is fertilized? It's the human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. When should HCG levels be detectable in the blood after conception? Immediately after fertilization, one week, 10 to 14 days after the first minced missed menstrual period. It's 10 to 14 days after conception. Now, this is why they say you should be able to detect, um, you should be able to, de uh, like a pregnancy test, test HCG levels, and it should be positive after you miss your first period because you have menstruation, right? You, you have a period. 14 days later, you have ovulation. That pregnancy is going to occur within no more than a week after that no more than a week. Let's mo usually like five days within five days after ovulation, uh, conception will have occurred. So now we still have another nine days till we would expect another menstruation. So by the time you miss a period, it's already been 10 days at least. So that's why you should be able to detect HCG levels in the blood after a missed period. So this question specifically says how long until it's detectable in the blood, but it's actually the same in the urine. You can detect it in the urine as well uh, in the same period of time. Okay. Well, I hope that was helpful. And if you need to watch this video a couple times to get it, that's fine. Um, and you may say, well, I'm not a, I don't talk about this stuff with my patients. Well, that's fine. But I do recommend knowing it for NCLEX. This is the kind of thing that's considered pretty fundamental just understanding menstruation, like women's health in general. So it is considered pretty important to know for NCLEX. There's a very good chance you could get a question on this on NCLEX and there's no reason to miss it. Um, you can understand it, I think, if you watch this video enough times. So good luck on your NCLEX. Good luck on all your standardized tests. Thanks for being a part of the Clinic Review family. Good luck.